Welcome to today's sessions on ATA Carnet. My respected friends, on behalf of Indian Institute of Foreign Trade and Office of Director General of Foreign Trade, I again welcome to each one of you for today's sessions. Today's sessions is aimed in the series of efforts that we are making to make our uh, young talks or young entrepreneur to understand the nuances of foreign trade. Today's sessions in this series is aimed at understanding that how ATA Carnet can be leveraged in order to participate in global trade fairs, exhibitions, buyer sellers meets and other such events which are aimed at promoting our exports in the foreign country. My dear friends, ATA means admission temporary. It comes from two words, French word as well as English words. So first part is a French word wherein T is common and it say admission temporary and second is temporary admission which is in English. So it's a combination of two languages, French as well as English where T is common and it is known as ATA. Carnet, Carnet means an association. It is an it is a association of the countries, 78 countries of the world, uh, wherein a convention was signed in 1961 by the country so as to allow duty-free imports as well as export of certain cargo for the purpose of participation in exhibition, trade fair, buyer-seller meets and other such events which are aimed at promoting foreign trade in the foreign country. Dear friends, India is a signatory to this convention from 1994 and India became an electronic partner in the year 2006. In India, there is, a body create, there is a body of exporters and importers of trade community. It is known as FIKI. FIKI has been assigned the responsibilities for issuance of ATA carnets. Dear friends, ATA carnets are also known as passports for temporary export and import. So these are vital instruments which are used in foreign trade so as to take your cargo for, it, for, for the purpose of participation exhibition. Let me take an example. There is a auto manufacturer in India who manufacture quality automobiles and sells in Indian market. He has established his business in India and he has reached to a certain level and now he wants to take his business to next level by taking it to a global market and he wants to test certain markets where he can plan to sell his cars or his automobiles so as to judge the customer response, customer feedback and make some changes or maybe in order to customize that, that product as per the homologation requirement of country of import. In, in order to test a market, ATA Carnet can be a beautiful instrument wherein a manufacturer can apply to FIKI. FIKI will issue a ATA Carnet which is a document which is issued in, with a certain procedure uh, and then exporter can take his cargo in a country of import without paying duty in India and without paying duty in country of import. So he avoid the payment of duties. My dear friends, duties may be very, very high. For example, if a car manufacturer, some German car manufacturer want to come and showcase his cars in India, basic custom duty is as high as 125% plus other duties which include various SES also, IGST, compensation SES, environmental SES. So including those SESs, the total impact becomes 256%, too much of duty. For example, car is worth 1 crore rupee, duty will be 2 crore 56 lakh rupees, too much of money which is being wasted in the whole process. In order to avoid such kind of circumstances, ATA Carnet, which is a temporary uh, export and import or a passport for temporary export and import is leveraged by exporter and importer to promote to expand and to diversify their business in foreign trade. So dear friends, with these introduction remarks, let us move to our technical session. Welcome. Okay, dear friends, let us start our technical sessions. In our technical sessions, we are going to understand the various aspects of ATA Carnet, including every part of documentation and procedure involved. So dear friends, we have already briefly discussed that ATA Carnet was basically a treaty which was signed, convention which was signed in 1961 by WCO, World Custom Organization, based in Brussels, which is a custom organization of all country to which India is also a member. This treaty is known as Customs Conventions on ATA Carnet for Temporary Admissions of Goods. So purpose was to facilitate the temporary import of goods in the various countries, in the various member countries. As on today, these member countries are 78. 
77 customs of the world participate in the process and one country where the facilitations which which documentation procedure is done by belgium customs country is nearby country luxembourg dear friends this is a basically a carnet is issued by and guaranteed by national groups which administer the ata carnet system under a set of conditions these conditions are mutually agreed mutually negotiated harmonized standardized and are established by international bureau of chamber of commerce so international body and now it is also known as world chambers federation so it's a new name which is given to the same body and this convention has come in 1961 and the whole purpose of this was to facilitate temporary uh, movement of goods for the purpose of export as well as for the purpose of import into another country dear friends india is a member to this and when we have a ata carnet where fiki has been assigned as a body as a niga which is a national issuing and granting association by government of india for the purpose of uh, issuance of ata carnet and also for the purpose of other administrations which is involved so when exporter move outside india let, let us understand by example so there is exporter based in india handicraft exporter who want to take his goods outside india and want to participate in a trade fair and exhibition let us take an example there is exporter based in mumbai he want to showcase his gems and jewelry to the foreign client so as to book his order so as to take his business to next level to expand and diversify to make his business grow further and he want to let us take an assumption he go, want to go to dubai so if you see that on jewelry items usually duties in the world countries is high let us take an assumption in country of import duty is 10% so he takes jewelry worth 1 crore rupees so as to showcase because jewelry is are diamonds and golds are expensive items so he take certain designs and patterns and jewelry is something which one buy only after looking at the pattern designs we go with our sisters mother wife also to buy jewelry and we see that if you see a showroom you will find that lot of decoration is done lot of glasses so as to give a feel of the product and similar fashion when we want to explore international market test international market we first would like to understand the response of group of of customers by participating in a trade fair so if we take our jewelry worth 1 crore rupee let us land in dubai we pay 10% duty so 10 crore 10 out of 10 lakh rupee is gone to dubai customs then we participate in that exhibition and again want to come back and when we come back in india my dear friends it is treated as import if you see customs act 1962 if you see section 2 sub section 25 and 28 which defines export and import as a process and they say that anything going out of india and anything coming into india and now this since this jewelry is coming into india my respected friend it will be again duty charge so take an assumption duty in india is is 20% 20 lakh another you have to pay so just to participate showcase your goods and to promote your business you go to a foreign country so as to take your business to next level but in the whole process of temporary movement of goods where sale is not involved you take your cargo you bring the same cargo back but you end up paying 30 lakh rupee as a duty which become a waste for an exporter as a result an exporter will not be interested to participate in export and import operation so he will not take his business to next level realizing all these innate problems various countries comes under an umbrella of world customs organizations and has decided to allow temporary movement of goods both for export purposes as well as for import purposes through ata carnet so dear friends uh, this uh, basically the wco administer a, the international conventions on temporary admissions of goods including the istanbul conventions which was a conventions uh, first conventions which led the process for the administrations of this whole ata carnet and in this chain it provide the reciprocal guarantees for example in india the guarantee is issued by fiki assuring Uh, member customs administration that duties and taxes to be paid when claim arise for example so we have taken an example where an exporter go abroad for example he go under ata carnet do not pay duty there so in that case the liability for payment of duty comes on fiki and to issue that fiki charge take certain bank guarantees and charge certain fees so as to facilitate the whole process so let us move forward and 
understand ata carnet more from a business perspective so dear friends let me go to a website let us open fiki website ata carnet website and from the website we can understand how to get an ata carnet so there are some certain steps involved and let us go by step by step number one is we have to move a carnet application to fiki now you can register online on fiki website you can just see here there is a loop given where you can register your email your login will be created then you can apply online uh, usually carnets may be issued on the same day or within a period of two day usually the carnets are issued they may be issued on the same day also because with the facilitation of it infrastructure things has become far more simple but only thing is that we must have a confidence and courage to use that systems and become an effective participant to leverage information technology to our favor so if we apply to them they ask us for number one bank guarantee so bank guarantee usually based on a table which fiki has which is a which will be a duty equivalent to what will be the duty in country of import where you are going so in our example we have taken duties 10 percent we are going to dubai so equivalent to 10 percent the fiki will charge you the duty in addition to that there is a processing schedule one can see uh, as i scroll on the website you can see that there is a processing schedule where you can see the fee which one have to pay so here based based on the criteria of turnover and amount involved for the purpose of export and import an amount of fees is fixed and if you are a member of fiki a rebate of 20 percent each given and then letter of authority which is issued by owner of the firm to the person who is taking the cargo on behalf of this firm, firm to participate in initial exhibition so dear friends these are the four basic steps we have to conclude and when we do so fiki issues us ata carnet and once we have ata carnet then we have to file shipping bill with indian customs we can file it electronically on ice gate so we let us go to ice gate website um, from our slide we can see where we can apply on ice gate at platform in adi format along with the copy of you say um, endorsement that we have got the copy of you say this temporary uh, passport that we have got from fiki we have to attach a copy of that and uh, cust indian custom pass necessary entries which uh, which temporary export it means number one fema compliance uh, of mandatory realizations of export proceed with in the time period of 270 days does not apply on you number one and you need not to realize the foreign exchange because you're taking your goods and will be bringing them back second point dear friends they also take note of of the respective dates for which they will factor it subsequently whether you are coming within time or not then you can take your goods to country of import where you file bill of entry or any other custom declaration document which which may have been mandated by a country of import uh, in case of india it is a bill of entry and you file then you attach a copy of of your ata carnet the same way the procedure is taken care by the by the custom administrations of country of import then your goods are allowed duty free you do not pay duty in india you do not pay duty in country of import your one crore rupee cargo land up in a country of import with one crore rupee you go you showcase your cargo to prospective customers through exhibition trade fair as a sample or as a purpose of testing or as a purpose of calibrations or any other purpose or to in a numaish or maybe other activities aimed at sales promotions now uh, recent changes also allow the temporary movement of crews for the purpose of shooting or um, for the purpose of tv serial shootings or maybe film shootings or advertisement shooting something like that new circulars allow that process also and then you can um, showcase your you can book your order and you can bring your cargo without paying duty in country of import as well as in from country of export so whatever cargo you take but to take to a particular country you have to bring that back whether you can sell your cargo or not yes uh, this is a very important question my dear friends one can sell his cargo in country of import but only thing you have to keep in mind is that this cargo is under custom bond you have you are under ata carnet bond you this cargo has been allowed for temporary movement but should you find a buyer who is lucrative buyer who is willing to pay you a handsome money and who see, want to see this product as, a, as an important product so as to take this business to next level you can sell your cargo you can book your order but never deliver him cargo at the exhibition itself bring this cargo back to respective custom station complete the formalities which is which payment of duties because ata carnet 
एज एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट मैंडेट दैट वट एवर यू टेक्स टू कंट्री ऑफ इम्पोर्ट यू मस्ट ब्रिंग इट बैक शुड यू सेल दिस कार्गो my respected friend first pay duty to the respective customs jurisdictions and when you pay duty your cargo become free and then you can sell this cargo to a particular importer uh, or to a particular client or to a particular business organizations in a country of import so this bond formalities or bank guarantees formalities you have to adhere to because that is what ata carnet mandate to my respected friends if you have uh, taken your cargo abroad you what you can do you can your cargo for the purpose of display demonstrations uh, various uses uh, which which may be for the purpose of you say goods are intended for the use in connection with display of a foreign product and where in the goods necessary for the purpose of demonstrating machinery or in a protest and uh, in addition to that constructions and decorations of material including electrical fitting for temporary stands for for an exhibition that you can also take along advertising and demonstration material which is which will be uh, shown as a publicity material for the purpose of uh, promoting your your goods or your cargo in a country of import which also includes sound recording maybe film and some uh, lanterns and some slides some a protest such kind of items can also be taken care of in addition to that you can also take along equipments including interpretations interpretation document for example you are going to country which is spain we are spanish language is spoken so you can take a electronic dictionary so as to understand the customer requirement now electronic dictionary if you say you it, it can be a good translator to convert what he customer speaks into english or into hindi and from where you can understand your client requirement any other apparatus and any other sound recording material any other material which is aimed at educational scientific or cultural character when i say cultural character it means for example a true from punjab want to go and want to participate in a A cultural event in Canada, where lot of you say lot of Punjabi people have migrated, and there is a show there, cultural show there, where a singers, folk singer from Punjab, want to go and participate. Even that is allowed under ATA carnet. My respected friend, in addition to that, sports persons who are going to display their talent in a country of you say uh, where the event is likely to happen. For example, Michael Schumacher has come in India to participate in a JP Grand Prix, uh, which 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 was held in Dunkar, which is very close to Greater Noida or Noida, uh, maybe thirty forty kilometer from that place, where. he has brought his car to show his talent of of you say car or car biking or uh, car racing and uh, which is aimed at creating an adventure environment of entertainment environment of promoting tourism of the country which facilitated the orderly and sustainable growth of foreign trade whether of goods or services dear friends this car may have attracted very high rate of duty of 2 256% as i have discussed uh, in the beginning of this session so dear friends this car has come under at carnet so players also come under at carnet they showcase their talent and go back and similar fashion musicians entertainers and maybe singers maybe other cultural and and artists related to theater can bring their cargo advertising shooting they can also use their at carnet for the purpose of trade promotion or their business promotion so ata carnet as an instrument its role is increasing and uh, i am told that word over uh, in year 2019 some more than 3 lakh carnets were issued and uh, internationally including the carnets which are issued in india which were in, in terms of business we see which were around 50 billion of of business that is the quantum and size of you say of temporary movement of goods for the purpose of trade promotions in country of import and in country of export dear friends here we can go through the various countries which participate in in ata carnet there are 76 country you can see uh, these 78 countries has major share of world trade maybe 85 to 90% of world trade is in the hands of these 78 countries uh, should you find any country which is not member of ata carnet you still you can use other instruments so as to take your goods for the purpose of temporary export and import let me take an example if you see these slides you find nepal is not a, a, a member of the ata carnet so can we take our cargo to nepal dear friends procedure is little 
little different and let me cover that also because we are covering temporary movement of cargo for the purpose of trade facilitation in that case you can take your cargo to nepal so when you reach for example a check post in nepal we say landlock country let us say raksol or birganj where we reach and with the nepali customs we have to execute a import bond which may be around 3% of the value of the import for example your cargo is worth 1 1 crore rupee so 3 lakh rupee as a import bond you have to execute then you can take your cargo for the purpose of 15 days 20 days 21 days whatever may be the period of of trade fair or exhibitions to kathmandu where you can showcase your cargo and if you showcase your cargo there and then you want to subsequently bring it back you can bring the cargo to raksol complete the necessary documentation and formalities and bring it back but 3 lakh rupee which is paid as a import bond will never be refunded the beauty of ata carnet is that you have to pay a fee which may be as low as 35 36000 rupee even if you are taking goods worth 3 crore of, crore of rupee so you end up paying maybe um, not more than 50 60000 rupee including all processing charges but you can take a cargo value in 3 crore rupee you can take to a country and bring it back but in a case of import bond your charges become high as i discussed in certain countries this import bond is 1% and in, in majority of the ldc countries this import bond is 3% i am told but i have never witnessed but i am told that in africa certain countries charge 5% duty also as an import bond that increase your cost of business or participation in country of import so let us move to procedural part that how ata carnet is issued so my dear friends ata carnet in fact involve uh, a when it is issued by 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 fiki it it has a front page which is of a green color it must be kept intact because this should not be given to anybody or any customs page 1 includes the official seal number validity date intended use of carnet countries in which it is intended to be used the stamp the date and signature of an authorized signatory of issuing authority and signature holder of the authorized official dear friends when this i say this detail this page is very very important and the second part which is of the yellow color uh, or um, maybe having other combinations for example white or blue color which involves basically wherein two set are basically for the purpose of export i mean once good, goods will go from india so one set it will be treated as an export one set when your goods are coming back from dubai it will be treated as export so two set are used for the purpose of exportation or reimportations or as a counter file which are printed on each side on uh, which which are usually in the yellow sheet dear friends then second part two set of importation or reexportation counter files are printed on each side which are usually in white sheet in addition to that dear friends two set of transit counter file and when i say transit counter file underline it for the purpose of entry and exit are printed on each side of the blue sheet so usually your goods will go will good goods will come back and sometime transshipment may be allow may be involved transit may be involved because certain countries are landlocked now let us take an from this we let us take an assumption let us take an example you are going to participate in a trade fair in uh, in frankfurt which is in germany and from there there is another trade fair which is lined up in spain then maybe after 15 day time there is another trade fair which is lined up in paris and subsequently fourth trade fair will be lined up in a short period of 3 4 months you find that there are top four trade fair lined up in various parts of of eu so can you take one ata carnet for multiple number of countries where you can first go to germany and from germany you can go to spain from spain you can go to paris and from paris because these are the country which are sovereign country custom body is involved even if they themselves are as allow the free movement of goods and services being an economic union but still when your goods move from one country to another country necessary documentation of or necessary record or statistical record of custom is maintained so so for that purpose you can request at the time of issuance of ata carnet to fiki to issue you extra set of transit counter file let, let underline it extra set of transit counter file so that you can involve different number of countries which are involved in the whole process to cover your journey in one visits because traveling to europe involve a cost cost of goods cost of i mean the gentleman who will be taking care of this showcasing the goods so you want to minimize your cost of business by Uh, covering maximum number of event possible so that your your ability or your your probability to sell your cargo in europe become high so you can 
participate in as many as trade fair and exhibitions. Usually, a uh, ATA carnet is issued for a period of three months. It can go beyond that. You can go for six months, nine months. As per your business requirement, you can increase and uh, your business, um, uh, your period of ATA carnet so as to uh, in- enhance the scope of your business in respective country of imports. Dear friends, now let me take two three examples to explain you the business cases. Let us take there is a exporter based in Saranpur. He want to participate in an exhibition which will be held in Tokyo. So he take his uh, woodcraft or maybe furniture items and items of arts and craft and travel from Saranpur via flight through I mean through a uh, booking his cargo through a unit load devices he land up in Tokyo he books several orders he participate in a in a exhibitions where which is in held every year um, in in any month of business in in Tokyo dear friends for example during the course he find that there is a buyer who is willing to buy his cargo it makes sense for him to sell his cargo because if he bring his furniture back the cost of freight will be a cost to business and plus he will bring to bring his cargo to Delhi from Delhi again he has take his cargo to Saranpur so usually sometimes it makes a great sense to take your cargo under ATA carnet but should you guide get a lucrative price or a competitive price or a price which make a trade-off to cover your return freight cost which 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 may be very high involving time involving cost you can sell your cargo and customs allow the ATA carnet treaty allow this convention allow you to sell your cargo only thing when you come back you have to realize your payment through proper banking channels that is what FEMA amended you have to file an amendment when I say amendment underline it amendment for shipping bill so your shipping bill has to be changed because we know there is a five type of shipping bill first shipping bill is known as ATA carnet second is known for duty drawback this duty drawback now your goods are going abroad certain element of duties may be involved which may be duties because of which which has suffered because you have used some imported com- component for example this furniture manufacturer based in saranpur buy a certain um, certain colors a certain painting material other material from china on which he pay custom duty so in the, and he find under all industry rates that there is a drawback given to him so you have to make an amendment with indian customs in your shipping bill you have to convert your shipping bill from ATA carnet wherein there was a mandate that you will never realize your money but now you are realizing your money money must come through proper banking channel within a period of 270 days you require EBRC so as to close this entry with the various agencies like DGFT where you have to claim MEIS benefit or other benefits which are involved maybe our obligations like advance authorization or EPCG or DFIA or maybe other any other obli- obligations which have entitlement so as to be emerge as a status exporter so you require copy of e- EBRC so you file an amendment and amendment under customs act section 149 and 154 mandate procedure for making an amendment in shipping bill should you make an amendment and based on this uh, bona fides of your transactions custom allow you an amendment in 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 shipping bill and if you make your um, amendment in shipping bill you can realize your money through proper banking channel get a copy of ebrc and avail all incentives benefits duty neutralizations and any other assistance which is coming from government of india so dear friends uh, this whole session so was basically uh, but aimed to make you understand the various nuances of ata carnet how what are ata carnet it is a document which is issued by fiki which facilitate uh, your duty free export similar fashion you can also use it for the purpose of import so for example there will be a trade fair in india or you want to bring some item for the purpose of calibration or for the purpose of testing for the purpose of sample for the purpose of you say understanding that how this product looks like or maybe test test drive or maybe a cultural show or maybe a exhibition or international trade fair you can approach the office of fiki there is a dedicated website for this you just type on google fiki ata carnet you can avail your ata carnet for the purpose of import also involving the same kind of procedure and you can promote your business 
expand your business diversify your business by leveraging this beautiful instrument which help you to avoid the payment of duties which otherwise may become a huge cost for your business and a huge discouragement for your business not to participate in foreign trade so my request please use ata carnet as an instrument it help your business grow thank you so dear friends in today's session we have well understood that what is a ata carnet as an instrument how application has to be moved what security deposits we have to make how bank guarantee has to be executed what is the normal set which is issued by fiki how that documentation documentation take place in india as well as abroad and what precautions an exporter has to take when he leverage ata carnet for the purpose of participation in international trade fairs international exhibitions and buyer seller meets or maybe other events which are aimed at trade promotion dear friends this session was basically aimed to supplement our previous sessions on on trade promotion wherein certain business strategies were discussed by the relevant faculty to encourage you to to in to, to enhance your level of understanding about how we can expand and diversify our business in indus market and i hope that today's session has uh, had fulfilled your requirement should you feel any additional requirement never hesitate to be in touch with us with this we wind up this session have a good time